Hi, my name is Christoph Martin Frommen. I'm a professional recording engineer and looking back now to over 30 years of experience with organ recordings. I have recorded hundreds of organs in my professional life and um, I have been asked by my friend Joseph Vitacco from the United States who is the owner of the JAV recording labels to um, take part in this uh, video tutorial about organ recordings which is made on the demand of the AGO, the American Guild of Organists. And sitting next to me is my friend Chris Hilzer, who is also a recording engineer and uh, who helps me today with this tutorial video and who also brought some of his own microphones. And Chris also assisted me for the last recordings that I made for my record label, which is the Aeolus record label from Germany. And um, so thank you very much, Chris, to be here today with us. It's and um, yes, to, to help me with this, with this tutorial video. So the idea of this video tutorial is um, to show musicians and organists in particular how they can record themselves and to give some ideas about the best practices for doing good quality organ music recordings. Because we all know that the recording uh, world has uh, changed and the traditional record labels, the CD record labels are in trouble and there are not very many left who actually release organ music recordings. On the other hand, there are fabulous organists all over the world and they need to promote themselves more and more. And so this is a video that shall help you uh, to train uh, yourself in doing recordings yourself of your own playing. We are later in this video giving some examples of recordings. We have uh, plenty of microphones here on this table and later in this tutorial uh, Chris will film me while I set up the microphones and I will give some explanations why I do things like I do, as I do, and, and then I'm going to play an excerpt of Bach's uh, famous C minor prelude BWV 546 and we are going to switch under the video the audio tracks and um, so that you can hear immediately the differences between the sound of the microphones and the different stereo techniques. For this we are here in the church in Germany um, in a little, little town by the name of Irrel, and the organ here is actually uh, an English organ uh, which has been transferred to this church I think six or seven years ago. It was um, for sale in England and the German organ builder Hubert Fasen installed the instrument here in this place with a new front and uh, some technical uh, improvements and the church is from the 60s. It's not a perfect organ to play Bach, but uh, I th we thought that it is a very good instrument uh, to show the differences between the microphones, also because it has a real 32 foot and covers the full range of frequencies normally produced by an organ. Okay, let's talk about the different microphones here on, on this table. Um, we are really in heaven here with all these uh, fine uh, microphones um, and um, yeah I'm going to talk about a little bit about these microphones. Well the first thing uh, you will see on this table is this very um, common uh, zoom recorder uh, H4N which uh, many of you might even already have and do recordings uh, with this. We're going to include this device into this tutorial video later as well so that you can hear the difference between this with the two built-in microphones and for instance 
a Sharps or an AKG microphone or, or a Neumann microphone. In general, microphones can be classified into different families. There are so-called omnidirectional microphones and directional microphones, also known as cardioid microphones. And there are microphones with switchable uh, polar pattern. The omnidirectional microphone will capture the sound from all around the space where you do your recording. Whereas a directional or cardioid microphone focuses in one direction, so it will blend out a part of the acoustical event happening. To show you an example of a very good omnidirectional microphone, um, I'm showing here this famous DPA 4006 which is uh, manufactured in Denmark and DPA stands for Danish Pro Audio. This is for me my favorite microphone and I'm using this microphone in almost all my recordings whether it's organ music or piano or orchestral music, even vocal music. So I would say that 99% of my recordings are made with this microphone. Uh, to show you an example of a cardioid microphone, I'm taking this Neumann KM140, which is the equivalent of the better and maybe better known KM184. Uh, this is a cardioid microphone which can also be identified by these little slits that you can see here. Um, while the omnidirectional microphone is uh, sensitive to sound pressure, the cardioid microphone is sensitive to the sound velocity. So, when you work in an acoustical environment which is very good, which has the perfect amount of reverb, um, you may use an omnidirectional microphone. When you are in a space where is maybe too much reverb, or you cannot be close enough to the instrument, or there is maybe noise from an audience coming from behind, your first choice should be a cardioid microphone. There is some advantages uh, of uh, omnidirectional microphones compared to cardioid microphones. The omnidirectional microphone has um, almost linear frequency response over the full range of the frequencies produced by musical instruments. As you all know, as you are organists, um, the lowest frequencies of the 30, a 32 foot uh, produces is 16 hertz. And these omnidirectional microphones reproduce uh, frequencies down to 20 hertz. So if you use an omnidirectional microphone, you can be sure that the lowest frequencies of the organ will be perfectly reproduced. Whereas the cardioid microphones have a roll off from down under 50 hertz and they will not reproduce the very low frequencies um, in a linear way. So you might miss a little bit of bass in, uh, in your recording when you use a cardioid microphone.